Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and in this episode, I am going to be continuing to persevere with the Rockstar. Okay guys, welcome back. And those who have been following will know that this is the Rockster, the ugliest Porsche in Australia that I have done an Audi V8 conversion to. Um, if you've missed, uh, missed it, I'll put a link up above so you can catch up and think about subscribing. It does help us out. Now, where we left it. Basically, I spent uh, an entire episode pulling the, uh, the car apart, trying to sort out the power steering leak, the oil leaks, and uh, the overheating issues. And I didn't sort out any of them. So <laughs> I'm gonna have another go at all of those things, and hopefully we can do something about it. Now, um, there were a couple of things brought up from the last time. Um, some of you might have seen that I made myself an olive for the power steering, where basically the the thread is the same matching up the original Porsche side with the Audi power steering pump. They screw together, but they weren't sealing. So uh, I made up a uh, my own olive out of brass. Uh, and some of you suggested, and, and it you know, leaked again straight away. Some of you suggested I do that out of uh, aluminium, which I've actually done off camera. I've made another little olive um, that you can see there. Um, there was also talk that um, it should have taper on both ends, and it does, but it's a very flat taper on this other end. Um, that is because that's what the, uh, the inside of the fitting already looks like. So I've tried to match it as close as I can by eye to the tapers that are already there. Uh, one side is actually takes a proper cone-shaped taper. The other side is, uh, is, is more of a, a, a very light taper. Um, so that's why I've made this to fit. Now, um, another revelation that I've come up with uh, that you guys might have seen in a previous video that as soon as I started this again after I pulled the engine out, it was making a horrible noise and uh, I thought it might have been the power steering pump. And it is, sort of, but it's an easy fix. I'll show you. Okay, so now I'm in the car. Um, so this is the power steering pump on the car and it was making a horrible squealing sound and I couldn't work out what it was. But uh, some of you now, um, can you see a problem? This, when I move the, uh, the uh, car out of the garage uh, and put the handbrake on, I noticed it got worse and better. Uh, that's because this is the handbrake cable that is actually rubbing against the, uh, the power steering pulley. So that is just a matter of holding that cable out of the way and we won't have that horrible noise anymore. That is one of the simplest fixes I've done on this car yet. All right, so let's get the car back up on the hoist and uh, I can sort of fit this olive and start uh, making sure everything underneath is good. And uh, then later we'll get onto that overheating issue. All right, so the olive is in the power steering now. We'll see. It looks like uh, I made it off of just just on the fly without actually looking at the old one, and it's probably a little bit too small. I probably need to make it a little bit bigger again. So uh, we'll see whether that seals or not, but that's in. But now I'm having a quick look at the oil leaks up near the oil cooler and uh, and these sort of associated lines. Um, one thing that one of you guys actually sent me. Um, is his invention, which is this, is, is squash light. Um, basically, it's a, it's a little torch that um, has a squishy ball on it that you can sort of locate in and wedge into all sorts of locations. It's, it's quite handy to be able to sort of just pick a spot anywhere and uh, locate it and aim at what you want to work on. Not a bad idea. Uh, and a, a good alternative to the sort of magnetic things and stuff like that. It's uh, sometimes it's uh, quite difficult underneath an engine trying to stick one of those magnetic ones on an aluminium engine where it doesn't stick. Um, this thing is quite handy. So uh, yeah. Anyway, um, bit of tightening, and now it's time to get the car back down again and have a look at that overheating issue. 
Okay, so many of you will be aware that in the previous episode and actually uh, ever since I've got this engine in this car, I've had issues with it overheating and the thermostat is not opening. And I know that it's not opening because uh, the aluminium lines going to the front of the car, both of those cooling lines are completely cold. So uh, even when it's getting up to temperature, I can tell that it's, the thermostat is not opening at all uh, because those lines are still cold to the touch and they would heat up instantly as soon as that uh, hot water was going through it. So there's an issue in my uh, cooling system somewhere. Now, I did pull the thermostat out previously and I actually checked it in a pot on the stove and uh, it opened as it should and that all seemed to be working properly. Uh, the water pump could be an issue, but again, this engine's coming out of a working car. So the assumption that, that it was not working beforehand or suddenly not working now is probably not the way to go. It's better to go with the thought that it was actually working and work through what the other problems could be and there were lots of suggestions and I am pretty sure the answer is is that we have an airlock in the uh, uh, in the car these boxes and uh, 911s are notoriously difficult to bleed uh, the coolant system in the engine anyway um, mostly because just the the position of the engine and the fact that all the, the sort of coolant has to go down and up and so so many places it gets all these air locks um, so even with the vacuum bleeder the vacuum bleeder is very useful but what i'm thinking is i need to actually get the back end of the car up to make the even though the the top of this coolant tank is above well above the height of the thermostat really get the back end of the car up uh, and uh, and run the vacuum again and get uh, uh, extra coolant in there and then keep the back of the car up while I actually uh, start running the car and uh, one of the suggestions uh, actually I was talking to um, a uh, a local Porsche specialist was that they had uh, a similar issue on cup cars years ago and what they'd have to do is actually back the put the back of the car up and rev the engine and get up to about 4,000 RPM to really get that water pump kicking the water around to get that, uh, to get that flow and force that uh, water around the engine. So before I start pulling things out again and doing other stuff, I'm going to try those things first. Another thing I have noticed is this car has been sitting for a couple of weeks on a bit of an angle and I've noticed that the, uh, just now that the coolant level has actually dropped down quite a bit in here which tells me that um, there was a little bit that spilled out last time the car overheated, but not that much. Uh, I've got a feeling that uh, some of that, uh, some of those airlocks may have actually moved. So what I'm gonna do, jack it up, let's get the, um, the vacuum line on again, let's uh, vacuum fill again, and, uh, and then we'll try and pump it through and really get it, uh, get some cool in this thing. All right, it took probably another couple of liters of fluid. I'm going to leave the cap off now and start trying to uh, start the car, rev it a little bit, and just see if we can get some coolant flow, if we can get that coolant level to drop, see if we can add any more. We'll just, I just want it to work. <laughs> This car is just wearing me down. <laughs> oh, why does it have to be so hard? 
Now the starter mode, it sounds like it's free spinning and not engaging with the, uh, the flywheel. Um, if you listen. You hear that? It just... It sounds like the starter mode is spinning, but there's no, there's no engagement happening. The car's not kicking over anymore. And this is the starter motor that I just replaced. Oh, why does this car have to be so difficult? <laughs> <sighs> hmm. Let's get up in the air, let's get the starter motor off again and have a look and see, we can see why it's not engaging. Maybe the location of the starter motor is, uh, was only just engaging with the tip of it before. Shouldn't be any different because, I don't know. It's still mounted to the engine in the same spot it was before and we're still using, um, the Audi flywheel, so I don't know why it shouldn't be working. Mm. Right, the starter on the bench is working perfectly. The, um, I've connected up to my jump start pack and, uh, and just jumping it and the, um, uh, basically when I kick it on, the spline jumps forward and spins, which is exactly what you want it to do to actually work as a starter motor. So this bit is working. So um, why is it free spinning? I'm going to now try and have a look and see if I can see inside uh, to where the, the back of the flywheel is and see if it's engaging there. All right, and in here you can see uh, there's the, the teeth of the flywheel. They all look fine, so um, nothing is nothing feels loose. Everything feels like it's where it's supposed to be. So I'm going to bolt it all back up and give it another go. All right, and here we go again. Let's see if it'll start again. What is going on? I don't understand. I don't understand. Oh, it's so frustrating. So it's not starting again, but the starter made it look like it worked. Everything looks like it should line up the way it's supposed to. It's all, everything seems to be in the right spot. Only thing you can do is take that starter out again and I'm gonna try and at least manually turn over um, the, the flywheel with, uh, with a pry bar and just see if it's sticking. I mean, it sounds like the starter is spinning and just spinning and not actually engaging, but it should work, should work. I'm at a total loss. I, uh, I got in there, the, I, I actually measured, um, basically I measured the distance from the bolting point here to where the engagement, when, when this, this moves forward and when it engages, what, uh, what distance it needs to be and what distance it needs to be when it's disengaged and corresponded it to the engine and just, just checked against where the, uh, where the teeth in the flywheel are and that is all correct. Um, as far as maybe not being aligned with the flywheel, as in the flywheel is here and this, this, is not, this is not quite touching it, it can't really do that. Like, it, this is the starter motor from this engine. It worked before. Uh, it can't get out of sync. I just double checked again on the bench. Now they've got this out again and it works again. Oh, this thing is driving me nuts. I'm going to uh, leave it for today and uh, sleep on it and maybe come back to it later when I'm a little less annoyed at it. All right, well, it's been a week or two and I've been tearing my hair out with this starter motor issue. Um, one of the things I thought it could have been is actually a low battery. I was thinking that if the motor is low, then it's just not going to spin enough to actually uh, punch the, uh, the, the motor forward, but that is not the case. But 
I think now I might have found the issue. So this is the old starter motor that I pulled out that, uh, that died, and uh, as some of you will remember, I got another one from a wrecker. Uh, and what I believe is the issue is uh, after looking at these two side by side, so this starter motor, the solenoid works fine. It actually punches uh, the, the arm forward, but it doesn't spin. So there's obviously something dead in the motor inside here. This starter motor, the, uh, the, the new one, um, it punches forward and spins. But one thing I did notice of the old one is that this gear has basically got a, a one-way stop on it. I can spin it one way, but I, it won't go. It won't go in reverse. It's sort of, sort of, uh, yeah. as a, a one-way sort of uh, detent in it. In this one, it spins both ways quite freely. There's a split sort of uh, ring or something in there that's loose. So I think this gear is actually loose uh, on the spline. So basically, uh, I'm pretty sure that this gear is just spinning on the shaft. So um, that is a real pain. Um, but at least now I have worked out why this thing is not working because as I said, by doing the basic bench test and watching it spin, it spins, it shoots out, does the things in theory it's supposed to do, but there's nothing holding this gear solid. So the shaft is spinning, but the gear is not. What I might do is I might have a go at pulling apart the dead one and see if I've got any bits that I can sort of swap over and see if I can make it work. So I think I've worked out why my old starter motor didn't work. Uh, when I pulled it apart, the, um, the, the looks like some of the magnets had exploded, but worse than that was there were a bunch of these little things in here, which um, were completely mangled, and uh, I'm not even sure how they were aligned inside the starter before, but I am guessing it shouldn't look like that. So um, there's four of these. They're all uh, busted up. This has also got... Uh, um, bits broken in here. You can see that uh, that piece there is broken and hanging off and yeah, it's it's toast. I'm not sure how I'm gonna go getting this uh, much further apart. Uh, I'm thinking it might be better to actually take it to someone, see if they can rebuild it and um, yeah, we're just not having any luck with this car. So I'm gonna take this in and see if I can get somebody to rebuild the, uh, the starter motor and get that going. I think for now, I'm going to leave this stuff and do this in the background. Next episode, I am going to get into the fun stuff that I've been waiting to do. And I know you guys have been waiting for it for a long time. And that is to start smacking the ugly off of the Rockster. So uh, hopefully we can get it looking a little bit more respectable. So um, as always, do the things, like and subscribe. Uh, join us on Patreon to watch the videos a day before everybody else, ad free. And um, if you need any parts for any of your crazy Porsches, make sure you compare prices at PorschePartsByJeff.com first. All right, guys, see you next time.